ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಪರಮಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದಾನಂದತೀರ್ಥಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಮಖ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರದ್ಯಾದನಿಶಂ ಮುಕುಂದಸ್ತತ್ವಾವಬೋಧಂ ಸಕಲಾರ್ಥಧರ್ಷಿ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪತೋ ಯಸ್ಯ ಜಗತ್ತನೇಕೆ ಮಿಥೋ ವಿರುದ್ಧ ಸಮಯ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತ ಸರ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರೇಣ ವಿಜಯೀಂದ್ರಾಖ್ಯ ಭಿಕ್ಷುಣ ಕ್ರಿಯತೆ ಸರ್ವಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸಾರಾಸಾರ ವಿವೇಚನ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾಜ್ಞಾನಿಮಿತ್ತೋಯಂ ಬಂಧಸ್ತತ್ವಧಿಯಂ ವಿನ ನ ಶಾಮ್ಯತೀತಿ ಯುಕ್ತ ತತ್ ಸಾರಾಸಾರ ವಿವೇಚನ ಯಸ್ಯ ಯಸ್ಯ ಮತೇಯ ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ಮದ್ವಿರೋಧಿನೀ ತಸ್ಯ ತಸ್ಯ ಮತೇ ಸಾ ಸಾ ಪುಷ್ಕಲಾನುದ್ಯ ದುಷ್ಯತೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಜಯೇಂದ್ರ ತೀರ್ಥ ವಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಜಯೇಂದ್ರ ತೀರ್ಥ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವ್ಯಾಸತೀರ್ಥ ಹೂ ರೋಡ್ ದಿ ತಾತ್ಪರ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಿಕ ದ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಮೃತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ತರ್ಕ ತಾಂಡವ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ವ್ಯಾಸತ್ರಯ ದೆ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಹೈಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಾಫಿಕಲ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ ಎವರ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ತೀರ್ಥ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಏಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಮಿಡೈವಲ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೇಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಆರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಇನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಏರಾ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಸಾ ದ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೋತ್ ವಾದ ಗ್ರಂಥಾಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಮೇಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಾಸ್ ವೈಲ್ ದ ಪ್ರಮೇಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಾಸ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ಲಿ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ದ ವಾದ ಗ್ರಂಥಾಸ್ ಗಿವ್ ಎನ್ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಫಿನಿಶಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಫೈನಸಿ ಟು ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಂಕ್ಷರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವ್ಯಾಸತೀರ್ಥ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ತೀರ್ಥ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಾಫಿಕಲ್ ಹೆರಿಟೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಎ ಬಿಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ತೀರ್ಥ ಹಿ ಟುಕ್ ದಿ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಾಶ್ರಮ ದ ಮಾಂಕ್ ಹುಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವ್ಯಾಸತೀರ್ಥ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವರ್ ಪ್ರಬಲೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಈಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವೆರಿ ಬ್ರಾಂಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಕೋರ್ he was given the name shri vishnu tirtha and later he took the the heritage and legacy of shri surendra tirtha and vishay he was renamed as shri vijayendra tirtha shri vijayendra tirtha was a great philosophical writer who wrote mostly independent works which can be called as prakarana granthas they are not mere treatises or prakarana granthas but they were more polemical works vada granthas he wrote more than 100 works these 100 works as it is it said been glorified in the tradition when named by a scholar would make him a great scholar all by itself this shows the great importance of vijayendra tirtha's works even a person who knows the mere names of vijayendra tirtha's work is a great scholar so that is how the poetical um, representation speaks about the greatness of shri vijayendra tirtha he wrote on varied topics nyaya vyakarana vedanta tarka and all the branches of learning and he refuted many um schools of thoughts which were actually um antagonistic to the tattvavada philosophy although he wrote independent works his style is quite independent and it also takes into account the previous scholarship and this is the greatness of shri vijayendra tirtha's works one work which actually draws the attention of all readers irrespective of the school of philosophy to which they belong is the sarva siddhanta sara sara vivechanam it is a quite a copious work by shri vijayendra tirtha which takes into account all branches of philosophy all schools of philosophy have been taken into account and all of them have been reviewed in great detail in this work in one way it can be called as the encyclopedia of indian philosophy 
it's it can be called as a concave encyclopedia of indian philosophy um there are many works in indian philosophy with bright writers which try to summarize many schools of thought we have the um the division of the orthodox the way vedic orthodox and the non vedic schools and all those schools are summarized in many works by many scholars so that a reader can have a, a, a bird eye view of all schools of philosophy well the prominent works are well known sayana madhava acharyas sarva darshana sangraha shad darshana samuchchaya of um, one more author and many uh, uh, works which summarize indian philosophy were written in the sanskrit language also however shri vijayendra tirtha wrote sarva siddhanta sarasar vivechanam in a unique style in previous scholarship in previous works many schools of indian philosophy were summarized by authors no doubt but however they were not reviewed in great detail what is necessary is not just a presentation of various schools of philosophy but also a critical review an unbiased critical review of the schools of philosophy both of them are absolutely necessary for a reader to think about philosophical concepts if mere schools of philosophy are summarized and presented a reader will be um, confused about the apparently contradicting views so to resolve this one must have a critical approach towards understanding those concepts in fact when a person tries to critically understand a concept it becomes more clear the concept itself becomes more clear by the refutation so therefore a summarized version a presentation of the concepts of philosophy together with a critical review is also much needed hence the sarva siddhanta sara sarva vechanam actually fulfills both the purpose firstly it summarizes all the major schools of philosophy while presenting them it is followed by a critical review an unprejudiced critical review which makes it a, a very valuable volume to be read by all schools of philosophy and all readers of indian philosophy as well so this is a unique feature apart from other writers being distinct from other writers shri vijayan tirtha presents a critical review of all schools of philosophy this makes this particular work sarva siddhanta sara sara vivechanam as most special and unique when presenting the schools of philosophy the sarva siddhanta sara sara vivechanam has more than 10 chapters it reviews all major schools of indian philosophy it reviews the charvaka school the bauddha school the jaina school the nyaya vaisheshika school sankhya yoga school together with the sub schools of vedanta like the advaita vedanta school the vishta advaita vedanta school the school of yadava prakasha the vedanta school of bhaskaracharya and many other schools have been reviewed together with that the presentation of shri madhvacharya's tattvavada vedanta school the advaita vedanta school is also being presented in this great work the sarva siddhanta sara sarva vivechanam it begins with the invocatory verse makyam pradadyadanisham mukundas tattvava bodham sakalartha darshi sankalpato yascha jagatyaneke mitho viruddha samaya pravruttaha in this invocation the mangala padya shri vijayendra tirtha offers his salutations to lord mukunda or lord vishnu shri vijayendra tirtha remarks that by the grace of lord vishnu we would be able to secure the knowledge of various schools of thought and philosophical truths in fact the omniscient god vishnu when uh, adored would grant the grace of philosophical wisdom to the reader apart from that shri vijayanatha also speaks about the context of various schools of philosophy it is true that the indian heritage has many schools of indian philosophy which are apparently contradictory to one another however this is by the will of god it is the will of god that all schools of indian philosophy and all facets in all dimensions should exist from time immemorial and that is the divine order however that doesn't mean all antagonistic views are true it is only one view which can be true and all views that are contradictory to the 
one truth view should should be reviewed and refuted but however it is the law of nature to have all all dimensions of uh, presentations um, be it um, valid or invalid that is the um, actually the endeavor of a philosopher to ponder upon but however all facets would still be there in the law of nature so this has been also been indicated by the invocatory verse apart from that she visited the remarks we should have a critical view a critical review of all schools of philosophy and all facets of concepts but why why should we have a critical view why should there be a polemical approach and refutation point when we take up any concept it is because truth can only be one although the presentation of truth can vary the actual crux of truth is one the truth cannot be in a contradictory setup so therefore no contradiction should actually exist when we are actually presenting the truth when we have a clear knowledge of the concepts and the wisdom of philosophical truth the actual bandha or the other the bondage which makes us to go in the circle of births and deaths will be um relieved and hence the philosophical wisdom is of utmost utmost importance mithya gnana nimitto yam bandhas tattva dhiyam vina nashamyati iti yuktam tat sara sara vivechanam hence we should make a critical review of all the views and all the concepts of various schools of philosophy in this sarva siddhanta sara sara vivechanam shri vijayanatirtha takes up a very unique approach he says when we are actually um making a critical review is it not true that logic has limitations is it not true that logic uh, doesn't go all the way to understand philosophical wisdom that is the question that is being taken up so why should we make a um, critical review based on our logical thinking and logical acumen when we are talking about philosophical truths are they not beyond logic in quotes so this question has been taken up by in the introductory part of shivijan tirthas sarva siddhanta sara sara vechanam in fact uh, in the brahma sutra the brahma sutra 11th brahma sutra of the first pada of the second adhyaya says remarks tarka aprasthana adapi it speaks about um, the limitations of logic one should not be able to one should not actually invoke um, the logic to understand great philosophical wisdom in toto so why do we make a refutation or why do we have a logical approach when we try to understand the philosophical truths to this shri vijay tirtha answers it is true that there are many texts which speak about the uh, fallibility of logic tarka pradishtana adapi is a brahma sutra no doubt it speaks about the limitations of logic naishatarkena matirapaneya is also a kataka passage a passage from the kataka upanishad uh, the kataka upanishad's ninth mantra in the second part of the first one uh, first uh, chapter of the tarka of the kataka upanishad naishatarkena matirapaneya the philosophical wisdom or rather the knowledge of god can neither be gained by pure logic nor can be re- can, can it be rejected by logic it is definitely true that logic has its own limitation but nevertheless it doesn't mean that logic has no role to play in philosophy it has a role how does it have a role it has a role side by side with the scriptural testimony we should be able to use logic in such a way that it doesn't contradict our valid experience that is pratyaksha anubhava and at the same time agama anubhava or rather agama pramana that is verbal testimony it should neither contradict our general valid experience at the same time the logic should not contradict scriptural authority it should be in keeping with both our valid experience as well as scriptural authority testimony and intuition such a logic is not of waste it is of very high importance in philosophical that schools that is exactly why each of the acharya made use of this logic to to some extent to uh, refute other schools of philosophy and also arrive at philosophical wisdom but however it is in keeping with the scriptural testimony and not in confrontation with the 
scriptural authority. This has been clarified by Sri Vijayana Tirtha in the introductory portion itself because he quotes from the Varadana Kopanishad Shrota Vyomanta Vyaham, Atmavare Dhrta Vyo Shrota Vyomanta Vyo Nididhyasita Vyaham is the sixth mantra of the fifth section of the sixth chapter of the Varadana Kopanishad. And then again we have um, um, So Anveshta Vyaha Yastarkena Anusandhate Sa Dharmam Veda Neta Raham Sa Dharme Veda Neta Raham Athato Dharma Jignyasa So Athato Brahma Jignyasa The Brahma Sutra, very first Brahma Sutra speaks about the use of Vichara The Jignyasa has been interpreted as Vichara Vichara or rather um, a logical investigation in keeping with scriptural authority has to be necessarily employed. So therefore, Tarka Pratishtana Adapi or rather Naisha Tarkena Api Dramatirapaniya which are being quoted earlier only speak about, speaks about the limitations of pure logic. It doesn't speak about the logic that is aided by scriptural testimony. The logic that is aided by scriptural testimony is most welcome. But however, the logic that is of dry nature, that is Shushka Tarka, Sri Madhvacharya himself says Shushka Tarka, the dry logic without the support of common experience, intuition and philosophical wisdom of the scriptural authority should not be entertained. That has to be shunned. But however, the logic which is in keeping with scriptural authority and intuition and common experience has to be necessarily used to understand, to critically review and come to a correct method of understanding philosophical concepts and that is exactly why purana nyaya mimamsa dharma shastranga mishritaha vedasthanani vidyanam dharmasya chatatardasha has been uh, remarked by the smriti which speaks about even nyaya the use of logic the mimamsa the hermeneutical technique the dharma shastras the ethics and the code of the procedure or code of uh, ethics and all these things the puranas the auxiliary texts and the, the auxiliary um, parts of the Vedas should also be employed to understand the correct philosophical wisdom of the scriptures. So therefore, dry logic should be shunned. However, philosophical wisdom should be churned by logic that is aided by intuition, common experience and scriptural authority. And with this background, the Sarvasiddhanta Sarasara Vivechana takes the... Um, critical review of all schools of philosophy. This makes, this makes it quite clear that philosophical wisdom should necessarily be polished, presented and understood by critical thinking. Critical thinking should not be shunned and one should not accept whatever is being told to them with closed eyes. That is not so. In Sarva Siddhanta Sara Sarvechanam, in the very first chapter, the Charvaka school is being reviewed. While reviewing the Charvaka school, well, many the Charvaka school is out and out uh, heterodox of the Vedic uh, heritage, and at the same time, it is atheistic. It is it is atheistic and also heterodox of the Vedic tradition. It is Nastika in both the senses. It doesn't take the Vedic authority into consideration, and at the same time, it doesn't consider a creator of the universe. While reviewing this, this uh, the, the school of Charvaka, the, the school of Charvaka is presented first, summarized and later reviewed by Sri Vijayana Tirtha. One such concept of Charvaka is that there is no soul apart from the body. There is no self, the Atman, apart from the body. This is the tenet of the Charvaka school. The body itself is rather the soul. What can be treated of this as the soul is nothing but the body itself. This is the stand of the Charvaka school. This has been reviewed by Sri Vijayana Tirtha here. Kimcha Sharira Matme Tyadupapannam Sukhamam Swapsam Iti Sushuptau Gajadi Gajadika Madraksham Iti Swapne Yoham Balaha Sayevedani Staviraha Iti Jagrat Dashayamcha Dihad Yatrikta Seva Atmanaha Paramarshat Sri Vijayanathita points out that we have a clear idea about our self, our consciousness as being distinct from the body. The soul is quite distinct from the body from our dental experience intuition also. We realize it as such. 
we can we do not identify the consciousness as the body itself nobody identifies the consciousness as the body for example in the sushupti state in the state of deep sleep one experiences the blissful nature of the self after one is awakened he remarks and recollects the experience of the sushupti as sukham swapsam for all this while i had slept quite blissfully i had a very blissful sleep for such a long time this recollection of the sushupti is itself a proof that there is no role of the physical body the physical body doesn't have any uh, experience at the in the deep sleep state nor even the mind however the self experiences its own blissful nature there this clearly shows that there is a self the soul the atman the jivatman consciousness distinct from the body and the mind in the sleeping in the dream state also gajadikam hamadraksham i saw the elephant and others in the dream is an experience even here even though the mind is working the body is not fully realized in this state the person remarks i saw or rather he recollects that i saw the elephant and others in the dream they are the experience of the i the consciousness as being distinct from the mind or rather the body is also experienced even in the wakeful state yoham balaha saye vidanim sthaviraha is being experienced a person um, in his childhood days realizes that he has a as he has a young body and but later when he actually reaches old age he remarks the one who was very young in the beginning is now experiencing the ripe old age the same i who was young am old today there is a consistent experience of the i factor here the consciousness as being one and the same throughout all states of the body are being experienced here although the body has changed the body has undergone many physical changes and chemical changes and in one way it can also be viewed as uh, um, a thoroughly changed body but however the i the consciousness is one and the same for so long in here for lo- for so long years so therefore the consciousness as an unchanging unique unitary thing within the body is very well experienced by all of us therefore the body itself cannot be considered as the soul there should be something called as the soul which is distinct from the body and not identical with the body so in this way the charvaka school is being rejected by shri vijayendra tirtha here and uh, apart from this many other schools of philosophy are also being reviewed um shri vijayendra tirtha takes up the um moment the school of momentariness the concept of momentariness of the saugata school in this school everything is treated as momentary everything is treated as impermanent sarvam kshanikam kshanikam this has been reviewed in the sarva siddhanta sara sarveshanam this is the second chapter of the sarva siddhanta sara sarve we'll be able to realize the unique palanical style in the critical acumen of shivijini tirtha here kimcha kshanabhangang kshanabhangangi karo anupapannah sarvaloka prasiddha nirbhada pratyabhigna virodhat viruddhatvat nacha seyam deepakalikeetyaadi pratyabhignavat सयेवायम गटः इत्यादि प्रत्यभिज्ञापि सादृश्य निबन्धनेति वाच्यम् अत्य प्रत्यभिज्ञायाः वस्तुइक्य विषयत्वे बाधका भावात् तत्र अनन्यता सिद्ध सामग्री भेदादेरेव बाधकत्वात् अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग रिफ्यूटेशन आर रादर अ क्रिटिकल रिव्यू इज प्रेजेंटेड हियर इन द थ्योरी ऑफ मोमेंटरीनेस सर्वं क्षणिकं क्षणिकं द सौगतस रिमार्क दैट एवरीथिंग इज मोमेंटरी देयर इज नथिंग परमानेंट in the world at all or rather there is nothing static in the world at all if somebody remarks that most of the things of the world are impermanent it is a welcome note for any philosopher of course the very spirit of philosophy is to point out that the world is not permanent no doubt however there are things which are static there are things which are long enduring there are things which are eternal like the space and time but however if the um, the spirit of philosophy is over enthusiastically used to point out that everything is completely instable and impermanent even for a single second it becomes an exaggerated version of the impermanence of the world this has been pointed out here in the saugata school of thought everything is held as instable 
and very changing even momentarily it doesn't even change for st- uh, remain static even for a single moment this is um, this has been refuted here if at all it is treated that everything is impermanent and unstable even for a single moment it is not so because we have a an experience of recognition of identity it is called as pratyabhigna purotarakalina padarthasya idanintanakalina padarthina saha tadatmya buddhi a recognition of identity of an object of the stable nature of an object is called as pratyabhigna for example when we see a pot at this moment and when we again see a pot the same pot after 5 minutes we remark that it is the same pot this experience is a valid experience the pot which i had seen 5 minutes back is the same pot which i am seeing today or rather now it doesn't drastically change although there may be slight influences of the weather and light and other things on that there may be slight chemical um, changes on the surface or so it doesn't make the pot altogether new there is something called as the pot which is unitary between the 5 minutes of time it doesn't undergo a, such a rapid change to make it completely destroyed and completely recreated that is not so because it is validated by our general intuition and valid experience so therefore it has to be held as stable and not completely momentary of course the 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 pot gets destroyed after um, about 5 or 6 years no doubt it is non eternal nobody claims it as eternal but doesn't that doesn't mean it is momentary here there may be an objection from the thogata kshanikavada school this kind of identity recognition is not valid because such a identity recognition can happen even in case of a lamp we see a like the lamp a flame the flame which is burning however even when we flick our eyes we have a sensation that the same flame is being seen by me but however the flame is different because the wax um the fuel the thread and others that make up the ingredients for the burning of the lamp changes every moment so every moment we have a different flame altogether but however since there is a resemblance or rather a, uh, a flow of a consistent shape of the flame the radiance the luminosity and others we tend to feel that it is the same flame similarly the saugata remarks that the objects are ever changing and momentary we have a sense of identity recognition only because it is similar to what is being similar before but however this is being rejected by shivajin tirtha here that whenever you want to reject the recognition identity the pratyabhigna is invalid it has to be always shown with proof all recognition identity cannot identity recognition cannot be rejected altogether because even in the saugata school also the dik the direction is held as non momentary it is held as stable and static because it is outside the realm of the panchas kandha this is being this has been pointed out by shri madhvacharya in vishnu tattva nirnaya also it is beyond the panchas kandha only those with that belong to the panchas kandhas are treated as momentary by the saugata school but once when it is beyond the panchas kandha not included in the panchas kandha list it is not momentary in that case we have a general identity recognition as cm dik this is the same direction in which i saw the uh, the sunset yesterday and i am seeing today so in this way when we actually realize that there is identity recognition valid validly in case of the direction which is not momentary that kind of identity recognition is held as valid even in saugata school so off uh, off right without any investigation all identity recognitions cannot be shunned even by the saugata saugata school so therefore whenever we want to shun a recognition identity as invalid it has to be with a proof with a contradictory proof in case of the flame we definitely know that the ingredients the fuel and others are changing and therefore the flame or the lamp is changing but however in case of the pot and others there is no reason to disregard or discredit the identity recognition and treat the pot as momentary so in this way the concept of all momentariness has been rejected and moving further um the arhata school 
is being reviewed by Shivijana Tirtha. Kimcha Dravya Pariyaya Varge Sapta Bhangiti Jaina Pibhagama Jaina 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 Pibhagamo Nayuktaha Vyavastida Sadasat Prakara Dvayati Rikta Prakara Sya Apramani Katvat Yekaika Prakara Pibhagami Dosha Dashanat Tato Peyata Itichet Tathasati Sapta Bhangi Karepi Dosha Dashanat Tasyapi त्याग प्रसंगात जगतः सत्वैक प्रकार अभिभगमे दोषा भावाच्च नहि जगतः सत्वैक प्रकार अभिभगम एव विरोधः नदु सप्तभंगी कारी इत्यत्र विशिष्य नियामकम अस्ति विरोधस्य भयत्र तुल्यत्वात इन द अर्हता स्कूल द रिलेटिविज्म इज एडवोकेटेड ऑल ऑब्जेक्ट्स दैट वी सी इन द वर्ल्ड are held to be bound by the law of relativism. This should not be confused with the theory of relativity and others that is prevalent in the science field. Although there are certain uh, um, similarities here and there, it is not the same theory that is being advocated here. In the Arhata school, everything is held as multifaceted. All objects have multi-dimensions. Even the so apparently contradictory dimensions. For example, is the thing real? Yes, it's real from one perspective. Is it unreal? Yes, it's unreal. Is it both real and unreal? Yes. Is it both beyond real and unreal? Yes, again. Is it unreal and real? Yes. Is it real and unreal? Yes. Is it both beyond everything? Yes. So, all similar apparently contradictory attributes are entertained, rejected, combined, and made into different different combinations and seven combinations have been come, uh, have been taken up by the arhata school to um, understand any object but however shri vijayanatirtha makes a critical review of this he says there is no um, hard and fast rule to consider more than two dimensions there are only two dimensions reality and unreality there cannot be any combination of the real reality and unreality it give, as it gives rise to contradiction. It is a real contradiction and it's not, it's not an apparent contradiction. At the same time, um, with respect to the law of excluded middle, reality and unreality both cannot be rejected at the same time. It is against the law of excluded middle. And at the same time, combinations cannot happen. Reality and unreality are mutually exclusive of each other and it cannot be combined. So, therefore, the concept of multifaceted and relativistic nature of objects cannot be entertained. The Arhata school may have a difference here. We cannot have a single aspect as the ultimate aspect of an object because it can be real in one respect and unreal in another respect. However, this also is being rejected because um, in that case, why do we stop at the seven? Why do we stop at seven steps of dimensions? Like real, unreal, real and unreal, being beyond real and real, real and uh, um, not unreal. So, why are the seven combinations only made? We can go up to more combinations and reject even the multidimensional approach. If the reality dimension can be rejected, if the unreality dimension of an object can also be rejected, why should we not reject the relativism too? Skepticism is always self-annihilating. As I had remarked, remarked somewhere else, it annihilates itself. So therefore, that cannot be held. At the same time, what is the ground to reject the reality of the world? There is no ground at all. If at all it is viewed from different perspectives, it is more of common sense. It is not something which is special to philosophical wisdom. At the same time, it goes on and on ad infinitum. It gives rise to infinite regress. Anavastha. And at the same time, it is bound to be contradictory at some stage and it is going to self-annihilate. So, therefore, uh, the multidimensional relativistic approach of the seven steps cannot be held. This has been pointed out in greater detail in the Sarva Siddhanta Sara Sara Vivechanam. So, moving further, many other schools of thought have also been taken into um, consideration. The Nyaya school, the Nyaya Vaisheshika school is also being um, 
take a number. Um, many concepts of the Vaisheshika have also been taken up. Um, the Sankhya Yoga school is also being taken up in the, in the Sarvasiddhanta Sarasarveshanam. According to the Sankhya Yoga school, the Prakriti or the primordial matter of the universe plays a very vital role in the creation of the universe and there is no Ishwara as such um, in the Sankhya school who is the actual creator of the universe. This has been reviewed here. It is actually atheistic in a way that there is no creator to the world. But however, the Vedas have been held as authoritative by the Sankhya school. This is being reviewed here. Achetana Bhutaya Prakritehe Swataha Pravritya Yoga Acha Nacha Vatsa Virudhyartam Kartaram Vinaiva Shiradikariam Drushtamiti Vacham Tatrapi Gavadhyatmanameva Kartrutvat Anyatha Mrita Shariradapi Shiradhyutpatisyat Nacha Ayaskanta Sanidhana Matrena Ayaskanta Sanidhi Matrena लोह प्रवृत्तिवत पुरुष संधिधान मात्रे न प्रकृति है प्रवृत्ति रति वक्त युक्तम को के वान्यात कर प्राण्यात इत्यादि श्रुति भी सर्व प्रवृत्ते के ईश्वराधीनत्वम वदन्तम प्रति तादुषोदा हरनस्य असम प्रति असम प्रतिपन्नत्वात हियर द संख्या स्कूल इज बीइंग रिजेक्टेड द प्रकृति और द प्राइमोर्डियल मैटर द प्रधाना is insentient even according to the Sankhya school. It is not sentient. It doesn't have consciousness. It doesn't have an intelligent process to create the world. When an insentient thing like a mud or a stone, Pradhana, is held by the Sankhya school, how can it be attributed as the creator of the world? It cannot create the world which is so well designed. There is a grand design, quote unquote, in the world. This grand design, this regulation of the world needs an intelligent mind, a creator, a conscious person to create it, a sentient thing to create it and not an insentient pradhana all by itself. The Sankhya school has an explanation here. Is it not true that uh, a cow gives milk to its calf? Is it not true that the lactation process occurs all by itself to safeguard and provide immunity to the calf and the child? It doesn't it happen all by itself by nature? This question is also answered here. Even this happens because there is something called as the sentient cow. The cow or the mother is a sentient being here. Without sentience, there cannot be such a process in a dead body. One more defense is taken up by the Sankhya school. Is it not true that the iron and others move all by itself because of the magnetic force? So there is action. There is movement even without a, in, a sentient interference there. According to the Sankhya school. Even this is being rejected here because the universe is well designed. The universe is well designed and there is scriptural authority of the Taitiriya um, Upanishad here. The second chapter, the seventh mantra of the Taitiriya Upanishad says, Ko ke vanyat ka pranyat, which clearly says that the universe has a regulation and there should be an intelligent force to make this regulated universe. If something is happened all by itself, it should have been the coincidence and co there is a fine line of demarcation between coincidence and a well-regulated world. So the well-regulated grand design of the world needs a sentient, intelligent being to create it and not a mere propelling of the insentient. And this, in this way, the Sankhya school is being rejected by the uh, Sarva Siddhanta Sara Sara Vishram. And next, the Nyaya Vaisheshika school is being taken up. Kimcha, Atyantika Dukkha Dhamso Moksha Ittyana Papannam. Soshtate Sarvan Kaman Saha Brahmana Vipaschite Iti. This is from the uh, Bradhanak Upanishad. Uh, um, and then, um, Shoka Tigo Modate Swarga Loke Tesham Sukham Shashvatam Neta Resham Ittyadi Shrutibihi Mokshe Anandana Bhavasya Pratipannatvat. So, uh, first of all, the Nayayikas have great affinity towards the authority, say, exceptional authority, no doubt. But however, the later Nayayikas rather conceived that liberation or salvation, moksha is nothing but a complete annihilation of sorrow, a mere annihilation of sorrow, atyantika dukkha nivritti. And there is no role of happiness because the Nayayikas very far, are very fond of the invariable concomitants, vyapti. And hence they remark, if at all there is happiness, there should be sorrow. And if there is sorrow, it cannot be liberation at all. So, to achieve a state of 
non sorrowful existence we should forego happiness also bliss also that is the uh, general assumption of the nyayika here he says there is no happiness in liberation and there is no sorrow too so just because there is no sorrow it makes it the state of liberation being beyond the bondage however this is being rejected here because when you have respect towards scripture scriptural authority you should respect shoshnate sarvan kaman sa brahmana vipaschita which clearly says the liberated one experiences bliss along with brahman in the state of liberation shokatiko modate swarga loke tesham sukham shashvatam netaresham there is a clear reference to bliss here so therefore one should um, accept that it is not a mere extension of sorrow that is liberation but also a blissful state moreover mere extension of sorrow would reduce that such a state to a unconscious insentient state such is such a state is not welcome no doubt there is no sorrow there but however it becomes making of a person as a stone that can making of a stone making a sentient person as a stone or insentient is not liberation that is not true salvation at all it is better to be in this world and enjoy the happiness of this world by somehow removing the sorrow rather than becoming a stone so therefore true liberation the parama purushartha the final end of life should not merely be an extension of sorrow but also be a blissful state and this has been pointed out there and then um various other schools are also being taken up um the purumi mamsa school has a very a peculiar um philosophy when we actually perform the sacrifices the ignas and others it has a magical property as a ritual all by itself a mechanism which leads one to procure heaven there is no role of ishwara or any intelligent god as it can be called in the in the uh, school of purumi mamsa or in the later stages this has been rejected um because tamevam tametam venanochanena brahmana vividusha vividishanti yagnena danena tamasa anashak anashakena has been pointed out in many of the mantras many of the vedic passages clearly speak about speaks about the supremacy of brahman so nirishwarvada cannot be held in a strict framework of the vedic mimamsa school too so it has been rejected in the sarva siddhanta sara sarveshanam tasman nirishwarvada sarvatmana tyajya jagadanishwaram iti so that is exactly so this has been pointed out there in fact in the purumi mamsa school also in the later stages even the purumi mamsa kas are apologetic about it um the author of uh, um um uh, bhatta kaudi he remarks um mamatvevam vadatopi vani dushyata iti harismarana meva sharanam and even even in interpreting the invocatory verse of kumarila bhatta many commentators have pointed out that there is a theistic note there so atheism to such an extent to disregard para brahman but entertaining all the vedic sacrifices uh, doesn't hold ground here this has been pointed out in the sarva siddhanta sara sarveshanam the sub schools of vedanta are also being reviewed kimcha jagan mithyatve kim pramanam this has been taken up and uh, uh, the school of advaita has been reviewed in the sarva siddhanta sara sarveshanam the general valid perception shows that the world is real all the arguments the logic shows that the world is in fact ultimately real even in the shruti text it has been pointed out dhruva dhyo dhruva prativi dhruva sa parvatha ime swisham satyam maghavana and many scriptural authorities actually talk about the ultimate reality of the world so philosophical wisdom has to take the ultimate reality of the world at the same time treat the world as dependent and treat the supreme brahman as independent that is the point of demarcation so moving further uh, the sarva siddhanta sara sarvechanam also takes up the vishta dwit school of vedanta it review and it says um kimcha chidachid chidachid sharirakam brahma jagad upadanam ityuktam achitor avyakta kalayoh sakshad avastha yogitvepi चिच्छब्दिता जीवा ब्रह्मस्वूपवत् निर्विकारेषाकोटिप्रवेशांगीकारा योगात् 
in the school of Vishita Dvaita Vedanta, the Parabrahman is a composite Vishishta of the souls as well as the insentient Prakriti. Chidachid Vishishta. And this particular composite whole Parabrahman is treated as the Upadana Karana, the material cause of the world. But this has been reviewed by in the Sarvasiddhanta Sara Sarvechanam. It cannot be so. It is only the Achit factor or rather the Mula Prakriti, primordial matter, which is the material cause which undergoes a change to become the universe. Because the other part, the sentient part, just like the Brahman, the Jivas cannot be treated as the uh, material cause because they don't undergo any change. When they doesn't undergo any change, it cannot be held as the Upadana Karana or the material cause at all. What makes a material cause have its status, the change? When, whenever there is a change, it can be treated as material cause. Without any change, it cannot be treated as the material cause at all. So, by summer, by review, by a critical review of all schools of philosophy, the Sarvasiddhanta Sarasar Vechanam presents the school of Madhvacharya, which can be called as the Tattvavada school or the Dvaita Vedanta school at the end. Aduna Ananda Tirtiya Prakriya Hridayangama Shrutisprati Purana Adi Siddha Sankshipya Varnyate. This has been presented here. So, what is Tattva? Atra Adu Tattvam Nirupyate Anaropitam Tattvam Praviti Vishayiti Yavat. So, it is Tattvavada. It advocates the ultimate reality of the world. That doesn't mean the Brahman and the world are the same. It is equally true, but however, the world is dependent real and the Parabrahman is the independent real. Tatcha Dividham Svatantram Asvatantram Cheti Sarupa Pramiti Pravritti Lakshana Tattatra Vidhye Yat Param Napekshate Tat Svatantram Tatra Yat Parapeksham Tad Asvatantram The Tattva Sankhyana of Sri Madhvacharya is presented here by Sri Vijayanathirtha, the crux of the Tattvavada philosophy. There are two types of reals. The independent real, which is the Parabrahman, which is independent with respect to its manifestation, with respect to it being the object of valid knowledge and with respect to its uh, efficiency to do things. Sarupa Pramiti Pravruti. But however, the world, the universe, the souls do not manifest or do not originate all by themselves. Being an object of valid knowledge is actually a grace of the Lord. Their existence is a grace of the Lord. And the souls are the objects like the pot being efficient to carry water and others are actually being given or rather infused by the power of the God. So therefore they are dependent reals and the Parabrahman alone is independent real. And this grand philosophy Sri Madhvacharya is also presented in the Sarvasiddhanta Sara Sarvechanam. The Sarvasiddhanta Sara Sarvechanam actually goes into very great detail by presenting each and every school of thought and makes a very very critical review of all the schools of thought. Each and every line is um, indispensable in this great work. So, this great work of Sri Vijayanathirtha needs to be studied by all scholars of Indian philosophy, all scholars of philosophy in general, the readers of Indian philosophy, the students as well. This is a great text to even start with or rather it's a great text even in the, the middle stage and here it's a great text for, text for a great scholar too to study all schools of philosophy and to make a critical review of all the schools. Um, this Sarvasiddhanta Sara Sarvechanam is a grace by Sri Vijayanathirtha, by Sri Vyasatirtha who was his guru as well to the philosophical academy as such. I hope um, Sri Vijayanathirtha's great work, the Sarvasiddhanta Sara Sarvechanam reaches all enthusiasts of Indian philosophy, all scholars of Indian philosophy and makes one to make a critical review of all concepts of Indian philosophy and gain philosophical wisdom. By this remark, I would like to conclude my short lecture on this Sarvasiddhanta Sara Sarvechanam of Sri Vijayendra Tirtha on the occasion of Sri Vijayendra Tirtha's Aradhana Mahotsava. Here, I thank the um, World Forum of Vyasaraja Devotees Organizers for organizing this online lecture. Namaskara to one and all. Kagena Vacha, Manasindirva, Buddhatmanava, Pratis Sabhavat, Karomiyatta Chakalam Parasmi, Narayana Yeti Samar Payami, Shivan Madhveshar Paramastu, Shri Krishna Paramastu, Shri Vyasaraja Vijayate, Shri Vijayinda Sirtho Vijayate.